Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir. I also rise to participate in the short discussion being brought by our honorable member from Omroy. Of course, sir, this particular sector, in spite of being the prioritized sector, is one of the challenging sectors that the government is being confronted with from time to time. Even though we do understand that the government is faced with lots of challenges, but we could see that the government is making efforts through various interventions to revamp this particular sector. Of course, we cannot expect that all the pending problems can be solved within a short period of time. But we could see that the government is trying its best to streamline this particular sector with the main objective to improve the standards of education in our state. Some of the major interventions are appointment of trained regular teachers against most vacant posts, upgradation of government LP schools and colleges, of course, the increase in the salaries of ad hoc teachers are some of the decisions that have been taken to ensure that quality education is being imparted to students across the state. Of course, coming to the frequent agitation by the teachers with regard to the delay in payment of salaries, even though we do understand that the payment of salaries, especially to SSA teachers, is mostly the obligation of the central government. But I would like to urge a government to kindly and continuously pursue with the central government so as to ensure that the concerns of the SSA teachers are being met timely. Of course, we have also seen in the replies to one of the questions in today's proceedings that we have also come to know that the government is planning to create the Meghalaya State Education Commission, whose primary objective is to address the challenges being faced by this particular sector. So I do hope so that with the setting up of this commission, it will be able to address the challenges being faced by this particular sector to a great extent. So I would like to make a special mention, especially with regard to the NIT at Sora which has yet to be completed. Of course, we do understand that late release of funds in the earlier years and also COVID-19 has badly affected and has ultimately led to a delay in the completion of this particular project. But I would like to take this opportunity to urge the government to continuously pursue with the central government with regard to timely release of funds and kindly ensure that the construction of this particular project be completed at the earliest. As we all know that once this particular project or institution is completed, it will greatly benefit the people of our beloved state. Not only in terms of providing education to our students, but also in terms of providing employment to the people of our beloved state. So due to paucity of time, sir, I would, like, I would not like to lengthen my speech. So with these few submissions, I would like to end my speech. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The Deputy Speaker, sir, for allowing me to participate in this short duration discussion brought by Honorable Member from Umroy, Sri George Lingdo. I'll be very brief in my submission. I just want to draw the attention of Honorable Minister in Church Education and the government to the fact that there are schools being run under the deficit pattern system throughout the state. Such deficit pattern schools, uh, in total, there are 13 numbers across the state. There's one school in, within my constituency, Salman Para constituency, which is Babela Para Higher Secondary School. These uh, schools throughout the state have 186 teaching staffs and 
21 non-teaching staffs. These teaching staffs and non-teaching staffs serving under those schools doesn't enjoy emoluments, pay emoluments like those teachers and non-teaching staffs in deficit system schools. They draw salary, only the basic salary, with their next allowance only. They don't enjoy other emoluments like hill allowance and medical allowance. And those employees in the, these schools doesn't enjoy superannuation benefits. They don't receive gratuity. They don't enjoy pension benefits. That's why I would like to request the Honorable Minister Education to regularize such schools into fully deficit system so that those schools can, those teaching staffs and non-teaching staffs can enjoy the facilities as deficit, regular deficit school uh, staffs. Secondly, I would also like to draw the attention of the Honorable Minister of Interest Education to the fact that there are a number of teacherless government LP schools throughout the state. I have two schools, government LP schools, in my constituency, which doesn't have teachers. One school, which is Sindal Gray Common LP School, the teacher has retired two years back, but till today, there's two and six months now, no teacher has been appointed. It's a, a single teacher run school. The children from that village is going to the nearest LP school in other village. So two and a half years, the children have been deprived of their right to education, which amounts to deprivation of the fundamental rights of the children. So I would request and to take immediate steps to appoint teachers. I would also suggest there are a number of schools which has three, four teachers. Immediate stop up arrangement could be done. This, from these two, three run teachers schools, at least some teacher can be deputed to such vacant post where there's only single teacher. So this kind of arrangement has to be done. Secondly, uh, thirdly, I would like to draw the attention of the Honorable Minister that many contractual teachers throughout the state has been terminated, their services have been terminated, and they are jobless now. Whereas there is one case where one person hailing from Assam has been appointed in one government school in Mahindrakans. This is, I would like, the, I would request the Honorable Minister to take note of it. There is one government help school in Mahindrakans, Bordola government help school, where one teacher who is hailing from Assam has been appointed. So where is our own Youths are plenty without employ employment. And these contractual teachers have been terminated. Why this person from outside the state has been appointed? So in future, this kind of uh, uh, attitude towards our own youths should not be done. And well, while doing such appointment, 
to, uh, proper screening has to be done. With this few submission, I resume my seat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank please you, Mr. Be, Deputy Speaker. Please be short in the speech. Sure, Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir. Thank you for allowing me to participate in the discussions on the Rule 50 of the Rules and Procedure and Conduct of Business regarding the news item which appeared in Meghala Guardian that 11 July uh, 2022 under caption the plight of the education sector in the state. <sighs> Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir, I'll be confining to few points only. I would not repeat whatever the other honorable members have repeated. I mean, say, perhaps, Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir, the biggest flow in education system are with the lives of the students. Often, nobody cares. The kind of attentions for their developing future, which is really needed. Right now, uh, lots of expansion that is taking place, but the equity that needed to be looked into seriously, Mr. Speaker, sir. Obviously, we need the quality of setting up of institutions which will do excellence in the state. There are few schools which they really have got, even got the award from the presidents also. We know that this education is the only symbol of hope. As they say, it's the only island of excellence in the oceans of mediocrity, Mr. Speaker, sir. There are, if there is no good institutions, if we don't create a good qualitative institu institutions, there will be a major cataclysm, Mr. Speaker, sir, in the employability sector. Now, when I have seen lots of teachers agitating here in the state, I was wondering what will happen to the students on the ground. It's not the students from the rich, but it's the students from the poor who are going to the government schools and the semi ad hoc schools. But perhaps one of the informations that we really need to give to the teachers and the committee is that the perceptions of this ad hoc school, semi aided school, and SSC school that they are run by the committees, I think. We have to change the perception. Maybe the information that we have to give them, you know, uh, it's not clear. That's why they are totally 100% dependent on government. If we give the information clearly, then maybe since they are semi adopt then maybe they will try to, you know, run on their own. They will not be depending, depending on the government fully. But right now, it seems all are not well equipped with the knowledge about the semi-government or the semi ad hoc, like SSA. They are all part and partial, but yet they are semi-government. But they have not perceived that they are totally, you know, uh, something like a fully, they, they thought themselves to be a fully government, like uh, deficit, deficit pattern, ad hoc schools, so and so all. They are not well versed about the system that they are running. So I would like to urge to you, Mr. Speaker, sir, try to give the in, uh, you know, information through you to the committees so that they are well equipped with the knowledge and how to run the schools. Just because of them only, the teachers and the students are suffering. Now, I would like to thank our government also. I've got Pine Mount International School in my constituency, residential school at Chikatsakri, which is not yet completed. Two of them are not completed halfway. But Kerapara Residential School is all, all completed. I have already urged upon the Chief Minister when he is going to inaugurate this school and make it functional. And a Klavia model school, it's already called a tender right now. Gambikri Block, under Gambikri Block, Sakapoldamri, and RS, RMSA, Menkakri, Gonchudari, Chasinpara, and then even at Rongatakri. Dalwagri, Mr. Speaker, sir. I would like to thank this government for taking it serious. But I would like to urge at least they should send across those contractors who are doing this particular construction to construct it or finish it at the earliest. Mr. Speaker, sir, I don't want to lengthy my speeches, but I would like to urge the students are often taken as a second fiddle. But we should 
be serious about our students because we have not created a, such a sense of hope for the students. They're longing that whether I will get a job in the future or not. So that's kind of frightened, you know, that sense is still there with the students. So I would like to urge to you, though there are lots of vocational training, vocational institutions that has come out, but it is not sufficing to the, you know, uh, the educations that they have got. Now there are lots of highly educated who are unemployed and there are not even em employable students also are there. So with these few words, Mr. Speaker, sir, through, Deputy Speaker, sir, through you, I would like to urge upon the government to look at the different kinds of institutions which can give them a proper vocational training, which, them, which you know, they can create some kind of uh, employability for their future. With a few words, I resume my seat. Thank you, Mr. Thank Speaker, you. sir. Yes, sir. I'll be very brief and crisp. Thank you, Deputy Speaker, sir, for giving me this opportunity to participate in the short duration discussion on the plight of the education sector in the state brought by Sri George Billingdo, MLA Umroy. Sir, as we all are aware, education is the most powerful weapon. We can use it to change the world. But going by today's context, it appears that we are losing this beautiful charm. Today I stand here as one of the concerned citizens, as a concerned representative for those who have given their fate when it comes to discussion of such sensitive, important, and valid uh, subject. I will not dwell upon the points which my friends, my friend colleagues have already discussed and mentioned, but I have few points for submission, sir. Firstly, I would go to infrastructure. As uh, government is very serious in improving the infrastructure, government is aware that most of our school buildings, be it LP, go, LP school, UP school, or secondary schools, it is all in a very deplorable and dilapidated state. So, but the government is taking very seriously and taking efforts and steps to improve upon it. That is how, during this last uh, year, Selsela constituency has also got a new construction of five, seven room government LP schools. I'm thankful to the government and I want to put on record my gratefulness to the department. However, we still have, considering the number of schools that exist, without the proper buildings, proper schools, we still have so many uh, things, so many steps to be taken to, be, to improve upon, to bring the right atmosphere, to bring the right uh, uh, congenial atmosphere to the students, to the school-going pupils. So, sir, in future also, my humble request is to take up more schools because as our friends, other friends have also mentioned, not only the government LP schools, but government, uh, non-government schools are also running, uh, the running the classes where they have no roof. Last, very recently also, I have visited some of the villages where during the rainy season, the rains are pouring like anything, they are no better than, as I have earlier also mentioned, the, these school buildings are no better than cow sheds. So I urge upon the department to look into that as I was given to understand they have sent out their block officers, subdivisional officers also to submit the list of schools which are having a very bad dilapidated condition schools. Uh, secondly, I, would come, I will come to teachers' appointment. As others have also rightly mentioned, the appointment of teachers is uh, in the LP schools and upper primary schools where we have adopted new uh, norms. Only the MTED passed uh, qualified teachers are to be appointed in the schools, but it is taking time and I'm concerned about uh, Dadangiri subdivision where my constituency also falls. 
uh, in spite of the fact that they have already undergone uh, two phase of examination, the candidates of Dadinguri subdivision is yet to see uh, their the thing. The first one, first phase, also they have not given out the result, and no appointment has been taking place. And the second phase, along with the rest of the uh, state, the second phase is also yet to see the light. So my request, I urge upon the department to kindly take this seriously, appointment of teachers, because most of the schools are running without the teachers. And now let me come to the very important uh, 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 Tura schools, Tura Public School, which is the only premier a uh, school which provides ICSE course. Sir, through you, I would like to request the government to look into the plight of this, the problem of this school, where they are running the school without a regular head teacher, headmistress. After the retirement of the previous headmistress, no regular headmistress has been appointed as far as my knowledge goes. and. I would also request, this is the only premier school which provides uh, ICAC course in Garo Hills and the capacity of this school is very minimal, where around 40 to 50 students are getting admission into uh, the classes and whereas the aspirants, I mean the parents also as well as the students, who would not like to go for the better education? standard education. So my request is to, uh, the, to the department to you, sir, is to g give some kind of expansion to, of classrooms and intake of students. And at the same time, I'm given to understand that this school has been sanctioned to start higher secondary, that is ISC course also. But I wonder whether the government has given any kind of uh, go-ahead sign to start the higher secondary, that is class 11 and 12, to this uh, only premier school in Tura, Tura Public School. So these are my concerns, sir. And another, uh, one of the oldest and premier school in Tura, again, that is Tura Government Boys School. Uh, I, along with my other PAC members and with the various other uh, authorities, we have visited the school and we have seen the condition of the school. Please be brief. And government has been very generous enough to sanction uh, for repair of, for renovation of the school building. If you happen to see the condition of the school, they are running with all crooked, uh, rolled up old ceiling fans, all at the walls are all see-through. But I was informed, even the renovation work is not up to the mark and it's taking, uh, it's in a very slow manner they are taking up. And the work is also very substandard. So these are my concerns, sir, uh, which I want to bring it to the notice of the government. And third point, to my humble submission to the government, to you, to activate the monitoring staff of the education department, be it in the block or be it in the subdivision or be it in the district, sir. Because earlier, this the officers used to visit the schools, which definitely gives a lot of boost and, you know, a kind of uh, somebody is watching, somebody is monitoring, that kind of uh, feeling and attitude is given. But now, I don't see even a single soul visiting any kind of school also. Please be very so the lastly, formation of SMC, this is also another humble submission from my side. The constitution of uh, or formation of school managing committees. And I believe that this is the 
the school managing committees is really eating up the heads of the departments also. Because these SMCs has been taken as a kind of, you know, very lucrative post in many of the uh, schools. So these, some kind of regulation uh, and the procedures and norms should be placed and the instruction should be given to the school authorities or the departmental officers to monitor the formation of school managing committees because this unless we streamline regulate this uh, formation of school managing committees uh, there will be no you know improvement on the part of the administration or be it you know they are not concerned about the well-being of the welfare of the students and well-being of the school or the institutions. So with these few submissions, I uh, resume my seat. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.